Hi guys, my name is Dove. Welcome back to Bridgerton Bingo. Now that part one of season three has come out, I thought we would go through the bingo card that I made in my last video to see how close we're getting. And then I'm also going to make a part two bingo card. And I have some rules about how I'm gonna play that. But first, let's see how we did on this card. There are gonna be spoilers in this video, so. We have Queen Charlotte being nosy. I feel like, yeah, that's already happened. She's already really in there with Francesca. Okay, Colin has a wet dream or a sex dream about Penelope. Check, <laughs> check, I was so pleased to see that. Anthony medals? Not really, not not so far because he, him and Kate are on their second honeymoon. Um, bisexual Benedict Bridgerton. Listen, I'm not counting it out. I'm not counting it out. Okay, you cannot convince me that man is straight and I will stand by that. Um, but hasn't happened this season. None of the songs that I predicted have come to fruition, which I kind of expected. So no too sweet. We did get groveling and I wish I had specifically put on this bingo card to have uh, Colin on his knees because he was on his knees. We love to see it. Um, again, no song. Kate and Violet shenanigans, I I would say that yes, this happened in the first season, I mean in the first episode, um, but I think there's actually going to be more later in the season, so I don't know if I want to give that to myself yet or not. I'm going to leave it blank for now. Um, this next one, we have Queen Charlotte and Farmer George Fluff. That has not happened. I am still holding out hope, especially with the success of Queen Charlotte as its own show. I think it would be silly not to at least give us one scene with the two of them. Uh, Cantonese sex scene, check, times like three. <laughs> um, Colin and Francesca sibling love. Somebody in my comments, this was, that square was specifically gonna be talking about like Colin trying to figure out his feelings for Penelope. I thought they were gonna give that to Francesca since Daphne isn't here and we need to like care about Francesca as a character. But somebody in my comments said that they thought they were going to give that role to Violet and you were correct. I really love Violet. I really, really love Violet and I wanna see more from her. Um, but that's a whole other thing. I really want like a Queen Charlotte equivalent, but for Violet and Edmund. <laughs> that's what I really want. Penelope and Lady Danbury friendship is not happening. I actually really like Francesca filling that role. Like it's not the same, it's a different kind of relationship, but I'm glad they didn't like scrap it entirely. Uh, freeze beige, carriage scene. Boy, did we get a carriage scene. Uh, Penelope puts Colin in his place. I feel like that she did that with the lead up to the carriage scene. She's like, it's your fault. I didn't think that helping me get a husband would mean that you would deny me one too. How dare you? Shut up. Let, let's do this in silence. I think, I think yes, Penelope has put Colin in his place. Colin and Penelope first meet flashback. I was hoping for this to actually be a flashback, but you know what? I will take the story. I will take it as a verbal flashback, and I'm actually, I'm gonna count that for myself. Eloise presents an ultimatum. It hasn't happened yet. I do still think it's gonna happen in part two. Uh, overripe citrus fruit. They didn't use that exact wording. I did appreciate the nod to it though in two separate occasions. So there's the part where Penelope is in with Madame Delacroix, something along the lines of, I hope to never see another citrus color. Later in the show, Lady Featherington says something along the lines of, if she wants to wear such a drab color, that's her prerogative. <laughs> okay, no Colin and Benedict on drugs. I still, the mirror scene is happening. It just hasn't happened yet. Penelope and Eloise confrontation. I feel like this has kind of happened, but not like the confrontation. Cause I think actually Eloise presenting an ultimatum is also going to be the confrontation. Like that's gonna, but, but they have had a couple of times. I don't know. I think I'm gonna not give myself that one yet. Princess Edwina, it's very unclear because the queen did say like successful match overseas. That could be the prince, but it wasn't specifically said that it was the prince and I don't think we're gonna get an explanation for that anymore. Violet gets a second chance at love. It sure seems that way. <laughs> it sure seems that way. Um, business Lady Featherington, it didn't happen how I thought it was gonna happen, but I am going to count 
Business Lady Featherington because she got that document forged. I think that's a girl boss move. I do. I'm gonna give myself that one. <laughs> um, no songs. Jealous Colin gets pissy and Jealous Colin gets pussy. He sure does. He sure does. He sure made a scene with Lord Dublin. So honestly, I don't think this is too bad for the first half of the season, but there are some stuff on here that I know for sure is not gonna happen. So today, I'm going to make a second bingo card, but here are my rules. So I am going to allow myself to use squares from this card that are still in play. So if they have not already been crossed off, they are fair game for the new card but I'm not going to be using any of the squares that have already been crossed off. That feels like cheating, so I'm not gonna do it. It ruins the fun. And then the other rule is I'm not going to make any predictions of things that we've already seen. So if it's already happened, it's not fair play. It's not going on the card. This card is still in play. I'm still going to be checking it off. I'm just going to make a second card with some adjusted priorities based on what we know so far. <laughs> But before we start doing the bingo card, I do, there are a couple things I wanna say. So, number one, I love Francesca. I love Francesca so much. Introverted queen. As another person who likes quiet and peace and calmness, I, I can't help but stand. John is the sweetest, is the sweetest. And I don't know the details, but don't tell me. My friend Rosa had said how much they love like John and uh, Francesca and people were like, oh, sweet summer child, sweet don't do that to me, okay? I know, I don't know the details, but I know generally, I don't wanna hear it. <laughs> I don't wanna, I'm going to live in blissful ignorance until we cross that bridge. I know I was like joking in my last one, like where the fuck is Francesca at any given point because she's never around in the books. I stand by the fact that where the fuck was she in the books? However, uh, now I feel like we were robbed. <laughs> I think she is my favorite character this season. Like not at, like I love Penelope. I was gonna say I love Colin. I <laughs> Colin's fine. <laughs> I love Penelope. I am really surprised that they kept seemingly both subplots that I thought they were going to cut. I, I didn't think they were gonna have Colin be a writer because I didn't think that was going to translate very well to screen. But for them to not only keep the fact that he's a writer in and still have that conversation where Penelope is like, sorry, I kept reading, it was just so good. You're a very talented right? But it was made worse by the fact that it was basically just smut. I understand where they were going with making Colin a whore <laughs> and like, like, but the fact you really had to give us multiple scenes, you had to give us multiple scenes of him being a little slut and paying for sex. You could have gotten it across with none. And if you were going to have Penelope read what she did, we could have gotten it from that. I think like having multiple sex scenes with prostitutes was maybe a little bit much um, and did not make me love Colin. It really didn't. Also, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. All I could think about is poor Penelope is gonna get an STI. <laughs> That man has just spent four months fucking his way across Europe and fucking his way through London. He needs a full panel and I printed it on white paper this time so we can do more arts and crafts with my actual colored markers. Can you guys tell I wasn't very good at calligraphy when I tried it as one of the many hobbies that I've tried over the years? Because I wasn't. I feel like that's something I can blame on being left-handed. I don't think it's a valid excuse because I'm sure there are plenty of left-handed calligraphers, but it's gonna be my excuse. Okay, we have a little, we have our little title card. Okay, so my free space for this card is going to be obviously the pollen wedding. I'm gonna be really bold this time and just go straight for it with the pen. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Probably not well. So the things that I'm bringing over is number one, the mirror scene. Like that's obviously happening in part two. And I knew when I made this one that it was going to happen in part two. That's why I'm keeping this card still in play. I just wanna like update predictions. <laughs> Okay, so the next two squares that I'm going to be bringing over are the Penelope and Eloise confrontation 
and then also Eloise presenting an ultimatum. And again, I think these two are kind of going to be the same conversation, but they are like distinct things in my opinion. And then I'm also going to go ahead and bring over the Kate and Violet shenanigans because again, I feel like it started, I think it's actually going to be more so in part two, but more specifically, I think like Kate and Violet are going to really help Penelope like integrate into the family. I think they're gonna make her feel very welcomed, but I think they're gonna like be a team for it. So we've had this like subplot throughout the season of the Featheringtons needing to produce an heir. So I do think that both Prudence and Philippa are going to have children by the end of the season, but I think they're both going to be girls. And I feel like it might be Penelope that actually produces the heir. I just think it would be like a really delicious way to wrap up this kind of subplot that here, again, Lady Featherington is only for focusing on those two daughters that she hasn't even like factored Penelope into any of this. And yet Pe Penelope is going to be the one who saves the day for them. And then on the similar vein of like children, I also think that uh, Kate and Antony are at least going to be pregnant by the end of the season. They're on a second honeymoon. I mean, come on, we already got two quickies. It's <laughs> Which, shout out Cassie for having a Cantony quickie on your card. That was, yes, yes. And I'm so glad because we were so robbed last season, we did not get enough of them. Again, two squares going hand in hand. I think we're going to get two engagements. I think Francesca and John are going to be at least engaged by the end of the season, if not married. And then the other thing is I think that Lord Debling is going to at least be engaged by, by the end of the season. Because here's the thing, I really liked Lord Debling. Okay, like outside of a love match, he actually is best case scenario. You're telling me this man is like super passionate about his own interests and is looking for a woman who is also passionate about her interests? and he wants to support her in those. Maybe they're not in love, but they're really nice people who would support each other and maybe potentially one day grow into love. And he's gone most of the time and you'll have your space and money to do with whatever you please. And he comes back on a very predictable schedule. That's best case scenario, guys. I just realized I forgot to write down, I'm still holding out for the Charlotte and George scene. So I am actually really excited to see where Violet and Lady Danbury's brother, where that storyline goes, because again, I wanted her to get another shot at love, and I think it's going to be through that. But I'm really interested to hear what the story is between Lady Danbury and her brother. I think some more information is going to come out in part two that's going to complicate this just a little. I'm Okay, here's what I'm hoping. Here's what I'm hoping. I'm not saying that this is true. This is what I want to happen though. I want the rest of this season to at least have, like I want the information to come out of something that he did in his past or like something that is kind of like, ooh, they're must be an explanation for this because that sounds kind of bad and then I don't really want it to be fully resolved I want Violet to kind of like take a step back and be like I have so much going on right now with my family like multiple of my children are getting married all of that stuff like I don't know if this is the right time and then I want them to give me a full spin-off season <laughs> of them figuring it out her getting to know him better flashbacks of how her and Edmund fell in love like, I want the Queen Charlotte treatment for Violet. But my official prediction is just gonna be that information comes out about him. So I think Eloise's queer implications are going to become queer canon in the next season. But I think in the meantime, when all of this stuff goes down about Lady Whistledown's identity, Cressa is trying to take credit, Eloise is going to very much feel caught in the middle. I actually do really like Cressida's character this season. I love that they're giving her a backstory. I actually have really appreciated Eloise's complicated female friendships in this season. Like, we all saw the trailer and it was like, oh, she's gonna be friends with Cressida to like make Penelope feel bad. And then that was not the way that it's been at all. Eloise actually does care about Cressida. They do have a real friendship, but at the same time, 
She also still feels very tenderly and is very protective of Penelope, even though she's been so hurt by her. It's like, she still loves her, and she's not even trying to run away from that. She's just trying to keep her distance because she's hurt. That said, when we get to the point that, you know, Whistledown's identity is going to be at the forefront of the conversation, when, number one, Eloise knows who it actually is and wants to keep Penelope safe, but also is like, you need to tell my brother because now this is like actually involving us again. At the same time, Cressida is of course going to try to imply that it's her, but Eloise, number one, I don't think she's going to want Cressida to do that because it's going to complicate things for Cressida even more. But also, shes I feel like she's going to be very caught in the middle. And I feel like this might lead to the classic... I feel like every queer person has had one of these relationships. It's a female friendship in high school where you guys were like really, really, really close. And then you have a big falling out that's like worse than a breakup and is like the most devastating thing you've ever experienced. I feel like that is like a a queer rite of passage. It's unfortunate, but it does feel like one. And I, I think that might happen towards the end of the season because also this season has had so many nods to and explicit conversations about the concept of loneliness, like feeling lonely in a crowd, feeling lonely and unconnected, feeling lonely because of the ways that you have to deny who you are in order to meet the expectations of society, which as much as all of this is true within the context of like the relationships in the show, it's also true in the context of being queer in a world that doesn't accept you. And I think that conversation is going to be visited more in part two, both with Colin and his like trying to find himself and his identity and feel supported in that, but also with Eloise as she continues to understand more and more about her own loneliness. And I think it is going to factor into the queerness side of it because I also, (laughs) this is no longer just speculating, right? We've had showrunners confirm that they want to bring queer love stories into the Bridgerton universe. And I really do think if it's not going to be Benedict, which that man is not straight, he's not straight, okay? But if it's not going to be Benedict, it's obviously going to be Eloise because we've all been getting compat lesbian vibes from the beginning. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? And also everything I learn about her book I can't read her book, okay? I can't stomach it. And I had some other people tell me, well, Philip is great. He's, y'all love Philip for some reason. And here's the thing, I don't know Philip. I don't have necessarily anything against Philip, but I do know Eloise and her story, it might not have been intended this way. In the books, Eloise and Penelope planned to be spinsters together forever. Penelope, it was more like she just didn't think she was going to find anyone. Eloise never had any interest in finding anyone. And I think that that loneliness, the, the, the theme of loneliness, is going to continue into this next season, like season four, as Penelope and Colin are going to be off uh benedict and francesca i'm pretty sure they're doing like a dual season so it's going to be both of their stories next or at least partially i don't again i don't know francesca's story don't tell me but i know it takes place over a much longer period so at least part of her story is going to be in the next season alongside benedict um but i think like the next season eloise is going to have to grapple with this loneliness and that's going to be what spurs her into action it's just You can't tell me Benedict is straight and you can't tell me Eloise is straight. Those are not straight people. Benedict, sure, he can be bi. Eloise is a lesbian, I'm sorry. She just is. (laughs) She just is. All that to say, I think my official swear is gonna be Cressida and Eloise falling out, but like in parentheses, queer implications become queer canon. (laughs) I think Francesca is kind of taking on the role of Penelope when it comes to the Penelope and Lady Danbury friendship, but because the Queen is also taking on of some of Lady Danbury's role, like she's the one who's offering the money to, to unmask Lady Whistledown, all of that stuff, I think she's also kind of going to take on that aspect of 
the friendship role with Penelope, now Francesca, wherein in the books, Lady Danbury respects Penelope so much because she speaks her mind. I think the queen is going to be mildly annoyed slash moderately annoyed that Francesca is not going to marry her pick for her. But since the whole reason that the queen liked Francesca so much as like the diamond of the season is because of the fact that Francesca is doing things for herself, not for the approval of others. I think the queen is really gonna respect her for that. Like it's not what she wanted, but at the same time, she likes a woman with drive. She clearly likes Francesca, but I think she's going to like her even more after Francesca goes against her. I've kind of liked the little Benedict uh, side plot during this. I do think that Benedict has to get his heart broken this season. I think he's gonna fall hard for that woman. She's gonna be like, dude, I'm already widowed. I don't want to like go through all of that again. Like I, I, we're just hooking up. Like this is all I want. Whereas Benedict is gonna fall for her hard and that's gonna like break him. And I think that's gonna be his setup for his season next season. So Benedict, I think your heart's getting broken, buddy. I'm sorry, I do love you though. I do think just like in the book, Cressida is going to try to take credit, but like nobody's actually gonna believe her. Okay, so this next one is actually about the other family. I can't think of their names off the top, but the boxer and his wife and family who got their title. I think that there's gonna be a compromise about giving up the club. I think he's going to give up the club, but I think he's still going to, like he'll kind of sell it to somebody, but remain an investor. So it's still like his place, he can still go, but he gets the rest of the ton off his back for like, he's not a working class though. We're allowed to have investments. We can have investments in things. But I really liked the line that was thrown in about like, I don't know, I just feel so uncomfortable. Like, what did we do to deserve this? And then uh, they're like, nothing, just like the rest of them, <laughs> which is, yes. I actually think there's also going to be an Eloise and Colin confrontation. As much as Eloise doesn't agree with the actions that Penelope has done, I do think that ultimately she knows that Penelope was doing them for the right reasons, like she did what she needed to do. And I think when Colin is like really, really, really pissed off, Eloise is gonna is gonna like try to calm that down because ultimately she does want them to, like she doesn't want them together, but she does because she wants Penelope happy. And like Penelope can make mistakes, Penelope can do things that she doesn't agree with, but she doesn't think that should prevent her from a happy ending. So I do think because Violet has taken on this role with Colin of like being the confidant, I think there's gonna be a really sweet scene between Violet and Colin after the fact now, because they had the conversation before they were together. I think now Violet is gonna have like a sit down and be like, your father would be so proud of you. Like, like Violet had a friends to lovers story, right? And Colin is the only of her children who was following that path. So I think they're gonna have a really sweet conversation about that. I think Lady Featherington is gonna act like she knew this was coming all along. Like, oh, of course Penelope ended up with the Bridgerton. It was always meant to be. I knew this would happen. It would happen eventually. I always had high hopes for her. I always believed that she would find a wonderful husband. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. But listen, <laughs> I'll let, uh, you can have this one, I guess. <laughs> I do think Colin's gonna be a huge hypocrite when he does figure out about Lady Whistledown. He's gonna be like, that's not suitable for a lady of you. Like, that, it's just not appropriate. How could you do this? And he's gonna be a huge hypocrite because you know what's not appropriate for a gentleman? You know what's not appropriate for a gentleman? <laughs> I can think of a few things. I do think Antony is actually going to put Colin in his place a little bit as he's mad about Whistledown and be like, listen, you haven't been much of a gentleman either. Um, so that's getting its own square, is Antony has a talk with Colin. Because also, that was an aspect of the book that I loved so much, is that Antony actually really wasn't upset over the fact that Penelope was Whistledown. He was kind of pleased by it. Like, it, he, <laughs> he was a little like, that's actually kind of cool. The fact that in the book, Antony and Violet are both Penelope's biggest fans, I love that. I hope it's going to bleed over into the show. 
I think they're going to return to the earlier conversation about how here Colin found his freedom while he was traveling about getting to be the person that he is rather than the person that people expect him to be. And I feel like Penelope is going to use that to be like, that's what Whistledown is for me. You got to go off and find it. This is how I was able to find that. And I think that's going to be what like makes him understand it a bit more and look past his own like feelings about it. Okay, I don't think that Penelope is actually going to apologize for being Lady Whistledown because ultimately she's proud of her work. She has a body of work. That was like such a big part of the book that I enjoyed is Colin realizing, oh my god, like she has what I want. <laughs> like she actually has something to say for herself. She has a life's work. That's not something I have and it's something that I want and I'm realizing that I'm jealous of her. So I, I think Penelope is going to stick to her guns. She will apologize for the things that she feels genuinely bad for, but she does not feel bad for being Lady Whistledown. Okay, and I saved my perhaps hottest take of them all for last. I don't think that Lady Whistledown is going to be unmasked publicly. I don't think it's going to happen because Lady Whistledown in the books versus in the show she has taken such a more active role in driving the story forward in the show whereas like it's there but it's kind of in the background in the books um and i don't think that the show can or should give that up because it is like this kind of grounding that's our narrator right like that's the grounding point that kind of gives us as audience context it, it gives us tonight it's such an important narrative piece of the show that I think giving it up would be dumb. I think it would be really dumb and I don't think they're going to. So yes, I think some people will learn that Penelope is Lady Whistledown. Obviously, Eloise knows. All of the Bridgertons are going to know. I don't think the Featheringtons could keep their mouths shut. I think Queen Charlotte and Lady Danbury are going to know, but I, I don't think it's going to be made public. All the queen has ever wanted is Lady Whistledown on her side. Like she she hasn't been mad about the fact that it's that there exists Lady Whistledown. It's just she gets upset when Lady Whistledown disagrees with her because she feels like how does she know better than me? I don't like that somebody knows more than I do. So I feel like as long as the queen can get Lady Whistledown on her side, she doesn't care if she's actually unmasked. That, that's my final square is I don't think that Lady Whistledown is going to be publicly unmasked. So with that, I have finished my Bridgerton part two bingo card. Again, this one is gonna stay in play. We're just playing with two cards now. I'm gonna go ahead and like decorate this. You guys will get a little like speedy version of it. And then I'll show you guys again at the end. And then we can all talk about it in the comments as we tw twiddle our thumbs waiting for part two of this season. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Okay, I actually don't mind a staggered release in the sense that I think it's good for fandom. Like I think it allows us time to have conversations like these and speculate and like build community online around this thing that we have a shared interest in. However, I think this method of staggered release is stupid. Like if the idea is in fact that you want to keep the conversation going around the show, just give us weekly episodes then. I honestly would have rather had this whole season be like an eight week episode release than half the season, wait a month, the other half of the season. I think it was terrible. I think it was awful. Okay, I would have rather had like a four week lead up to that carriage scene if it meant that I didn't have to wait more than a week <laughs> for the follow up. With that, here we have it. My little, my little decorations. I, honestly, are these the best drawings? No. Can you tell that is supposed to be um, flowers and a veil for, hmm, does not want to, there we go. 
uh, is that... That's supposed to be a veil. I don't think it really looks like one. Uh, that is supposed to be a binky. Also doesn't really look like one. But again, we're here to have fun, not create fine art. That's just my day job. So anyways, with that, um, that's kind of all I have to talk with you guys today. Be sure to like, subscribe, etc. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, and please, please, please leave comments below because I would love to hear your thoughts on this season. I have so many, I'm just not ready to like formulate them into words yet. I need to like process, to be honest with you, because I... I've seen it like three times now, but but I'm still processing and I do want the bigger context before I get too in-depth about analyzing anything. But yeah, would love to hear your opinions. But with that, I will see you guys next time. Bye!